okay so what have we done is we draw the gaussian surface as a cylinder of radius r okay centered at the axis this is the cylinder and it has three surfaces s1 s2 s3 s1 is the upper cylindrical s2 is the curved hole curved and s3 is is the lower cylindrical right okay now for the curved surface we see that everywhere since the field is radially outward and delta s will also be radially outward right for s2 the field is radially outward the field is radially outward and so is and so is the is the surface area element as shown so if if this is the surface area element if this is the surface area element here you see this is the surface area element then what happens then what happens maybe i remove this i remove this remove this remove this so it becomes a bit cleaner and here i just show the show the radial field one field okay so here this this is your 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 e this is the e okay this is your e field and your ds your ds is is this do we see that okay now what happens from gauss's law e dot ds over the whole surface is equal to q enclosed divided by epsilon naught now so certain things i'd like to recall from whatever we had done we had said that the gaussian surface can cut a continuous charge distribution so this closed cylinder has cut the wire at this point however if it was a point charge i was not allowed to make a make a gaussian surface that would have cut it it, it would have been a cylindrical uh, kind of thing no no uh, su suppose there was there was some charge here or, or something then i cannot cut it but here i am cutting it one of the uh, the important uh, under the important points uh, i had i had uh, written that so i can very well cut this and i am cutting this continuously charged distribution the length of the cylinder is and the length of the cylinder is say l because in the end that won't matter okay so so let it be let this length be say say capital l okay this is the length of the cylinder l fine so e dot ds is equal to this and this is nothing but e dot ds for s1 plus e dot ds <coughs> for s2 plus e dot ds for s3 what is q enclosed what is the charge enclosed within this we have a length of wire how much enclosed l so what is the charge on that if the if the if the line density charge of the charge is so much then it is lambda into l upon epsilon not capital l no the length of the cylinder has is taken as capital l now what does that mean for s1 and s3 so so i am writing it here okay i am writing it for s1 and s3 
द आउटवर्ड नॉर्मल इज ऑलवेज पेंडिक्युलर टू द टू द सर्कुलर सर्फेस everywhere i have my field as radially outward is it not it is like that and at at this point my outward normal is like what is 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 kind of this so here it will be here it will be here it will be higher here it will be higher okay here it will be nearer it will be higher farther i go it becomes lower but whatever it becomes there it is variable you understand mm -hmm. on the circular surface the field is variable but always perpendicular so i am absolutely not bothered about it because e dot ds gives me zero okay so does e dot ds is equal to zero for S one and S three. So, so what happens? Therefore, one becomes. This is your equation one. Zero plus here E and D S are in the same direction, so it is E D S cos zero over S two plus zero is equal to. Is equal to lambda L upon epsilon naught. Cos zero is one. E is a constant, right? All over the cylinder, E is a constant. Do you understand that? Wherever you turn, it will be radially outward. Fine. So the direction of the field is changing, but the magnitude is not. And here, this is a magnitude. Okay. Okay. Since the magnitude. Since the magnitude of field E is a constant, all over the surface, of the cylinder, E is a due to cylindrical symmetry. Okay, due to cylindrical symmetry. so let me let me write it over here perhaps it is not visible since the magnitude of field e is a constant i think i am sorry is a constant so i am erasing this and i am putting it here okay it is a constant all over the all over the surface of s2 e is taken as a constant and comes out of the integral correct it comes out of the integral Okay. 
is taken as a constant and comes out of the integral sign. Thus, two becomes so. So two becomes what? E integral of ds over s2 is equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught. Is it not? And what is ds? What is the total curved surface area? The curve, it is the curved surface which has been taken as? 2 pi rl. So that is 2 pi rl. So, so E into 2 pi r r l is equal to lambda l upon epsilon naught. So E is equal to lambda l upon 2 pi r l into epsilon naught l l cancels and I get and I get and I get E is equal to lambda upon 2 pi epsilon naught R. It is the same thing that we had got by by that rigorous integration. You see, apart from all, all the logics and reasonings we have given, if you actually see, then, then finding of, of the field took us hardly any time. You see that. And no integration, nothing. I, I, we have done nothing. No rigors. That an element above it, the element below it, and whatever, and this and that. All has been eliminated. And this is the power of, of Gauss's law. But the trouble is, if you do not get the symmetry, then it cannot be applied. And that is the limitation of the Gauss's law. Understand? So what, what, can, what could be found out by, by great efforts? It reduces to a very small thing if you, if you go by symmetry. Okay? But if you cannot go by symmetry, then Gauss's law is of no use to you. Right? Okay? Fine.